It's time for the Sam and Max Beyond Time and Space Review for the Wii. If you don't know who Sam and Max are, they are an anthropomorphic dog and rabbity thing crime-fighting duo. Unlike the previous Sam and Max game, there are only five chapters, or levels if you will, to play in instead of six, however they still all intertwine with each other. This is a point-and-click puzzle-solving adventure game. You'll move Sam around different areas, clicking on just about anything and talking to everyone you can to receive clues and progress forward in the story. Max just wanders around aimlessly. However, once in a while, he'll give you a hint on where or what to do next if you don't really do anything on the screen for a few minutes. Not a complete hold-your-hand-and-walk-you-through-the-game hint, but something to nudge you in the right direction. Now, in the last Sam and Max game I played, I remember it being a little easier than this one. There were a handful of moments in this game where where I was stumped on what to do next. However, in my defense, I think some of the puzzles really stretch the boundaries of logic. Most of the game isn't like this, but be ready to think outside the box sometimes if you want to progress through. When you interact with someone, you're given a list of things to say which can or won't help you complete puzzles. Be careful though, as you'll want to pay attention to everything they say, because a lot of the puzzle solving is based on the character's answers, but it's usually subtle and indirect responses in relation to solving the puzzles. It is quite humorous at times at what the characters will say. My favorite character is Bosco, an extreme conspiracy theorist proprietor. He usually makes me laugh. By the way, Tell Stinky her place would look a lot better if she didn't have that big black lump in the booth that looks like a small intestine. If you watched my Sam and Max Season 1 review, you might remember me saying in that game there was some slowdown, like the frame rate couldn't keep up. Well, it's even worse in this game. Just look at this. That's just horrible. It's like the game hasn't rendered the cutscenes yet and it still plays it. Also, when you're about to perform an action, typically involving solving a puzzle, you'll usually have to wait from 2 to 5 seconds for the game to load the next cutscene. Now, 2 to 5 seconds doesn't sound annoying, but it sure is when almost every time you're about to perform a puzzle-solving action, you have to wait. It also happens a lot when you click on someone to talk to. This is unacceptable in my book. The graphics are okay. I can't really judge them based on what the game is trying to be. It'd be nice if they were somewhat more detailed, but I can let it slide. The controls work perfectly, but that's not really a surprise when it comes to a point-and-click game. There are a few minigames which brings variety, but I never went back to play them because either the frame rate just barely keeps up which makes it difficult to steer your car, or sometimes the motion sensors just don't work at all. And this minigame is just awful! You have to shoot down zombies with CDs from your car, but the angle at which the camera is set makes it very difficult to tell when you're able to line up your shot correctly. I'm only supposed to hit 10 zombies, but honestly, it took me several tries to complete this. How did the developers think this camera angle was a good idea. Just like in the previous Sam & Max game, the load times are just painful. It reminds me of Rune Factory Frontier. Some load times aren't really that long, but there's so many of them. The voice acting was once again great. And just like again, this is definitely not a game for kids. The language and themes throughout can be very inappropriate for young ones. And I will say that, aside from the language and themes, this game can also be offensive in a religious way. I didn't see any glitches, except for this one. The texture is freaking out, man! It doesn't inhibit gameplay, but it's definitely there nonetheless. Now this next part does contain a spoiler, but I don't feel like it's a major one, and it's just too good to pass up telling you. But if you really don't want it spoiled, then I suggest you skip ahead about 40 to 50 seconds right now. So anyway, there are a few places in the game that really made me smile. There's an item on this table here, and when I went to pick it up, it read Typewriter Ribbon. And I was like... And then Sam and Max said... That's odd. Somebody dropped a typewriter ribbon. What good is that? What we really need are healing herbs. And I was like... And then right here this happens... We could make... And I was like... And then right here, this happened... Hi, Elaine. Come on up. And I was like... <sighs> I love cross-references. Sam & Max Beyond Time & Space is an okay game. I honestly had more fun with the first Sam & Max. It's not a bad game, but I didn't have the same overall fun experience as I had with Season 1. It can definitely challenge your mind in puzzle solving, which I enjoy, but honestly, some of the puzzle solutions were downright odd and makes you go, what? 
But if you're looking for a humorous point-and-click adventure, this game should do just nicely. This game gets a 3 out of 5 with the title of Good. Having a good time? They're about as articulate as your typical club-goer. <laughs>